Hey, welcome to the Ozstar channel. I'm Glenn and on today's fun project we're going to diagnose the uh, service engine or check engine light, service engine soon light, you want to call it, on this 98 Nissan Maxima. It's got the 3 liter V6. I'm not sure what's going on with it yet, but we'll find out shortly here. Uh, works out good. Autel sent me a handheld scan tool. It's a little more than a handheld scanner, but um, just about four weeks ago, it's this right here. It's this. Here's the case for it. It's a 539B. Here it is right here. So what's neat about this, it self uh, powers itself up. It has its own battery, so you don't necessarily have to plug into the OBD port or the uh, USB to power it up. And the reason being, it has a built-in multimeter. So actually, what am I showing you the box for? I'll just show you the real thing. It's sitting right here. So here's our uh, scanner or scan tool. And you can see right here is our ports. Pretty neat. It's got these uh, little lights here. These bright, as soon as you plug in the OBD, it tells you whether it's you know good to go. You may have a pending code would be yellow and red, obviously, to check engine lights on. So I expect that to light up as soon as we plug in here. But I'll show you guys how it works. We'll go in the car. I'll pull the code, codes, whatever it's got, and then uh, we'll go through the diagnostics to try to figure out what it is. I'll put it all in here, this video. It does have a you know standard OBD cord, and then what they give you for the, uh, it also tests starters and batteries. So it's got the, uh, oh, it's not on this, it's on the box here. Well, let's fire it up and I'll show you. The, uh, this, the screen is really nice. I just hit the power button, turned it on. So over here you've got the uh, start test, and you've got a battery test. So there's your multimeter functions. And what's pretty cool about this is, uh, from what I noticed, there's a screen, it's pretty big. I don't know how the glare is probably messing you guys up here. There you go. Um, you scroll down, of course, you can uh, graph it, which is really cool. So graphing's neat. You've got the min-max and the frequency and the duty cycle down in here. What's the next one? Uh, of course, ohmmeter. Then you've got your uh, diode. Then you've got a 20 amp amp meter there. So here's your, you know, connectors for that, plugs. And what else we got there? And then 200 milliamp scale graphing. So if you want to test something that's really precise, that'll get you in there real tight. That's pretty neat to have. And then I guess for the starter and the battery tester here, they give you these alligator cables or clamps, which are pretty nice. They're pretty heavy duty with the standard connector. You just replace it instead of the OBD. So uh, we'll try it out. We'll test it and uh, we'll see how it goes. Let's get inside the car. So I plugged in uh, the OBD2 and got the ignition on, obviously, and it's asking me if I want to save data from previous tests, which I don't have any, but I'll just put, uh, yeah, it's okay. Um, doesn't matter. And let's go down to read codes, stored codes. Oh, and we were right here. The uh, little red exclamation light is on, meaning we do have a, a code. And as you see, it's a, let's see, P0134, O2 sensor circuit, no activity. So on bank one, sensor one. So that would be our front sensor. Uh, which is before the catalytic converter and the bank one on this car is the bank number one cylinder is on the back of the engine so the one towards the firewall so that's the O2 sensor that we want to go after but what I want to do now is pull up some live data so let me start the car uh, I'm not sure if it'll be an open loop or closed loop we need to be enclosed um, but let's because I did start it obviously to bring it in I'm not sure how warmed up it is it's high idling, so it's still a little, little cold. So we'll give that a second. In the meantime, let's go back to uh, live data here. So you can see all these features are race codes. Obviously, you can do that. Freeze frame data is good, too. So why don't we just, just for the heck of it, look at freeze frame data. Let it load up. And we were in closed loop at the time doing how much speed here anything short term it's okay just looking through here we're up ready to read some live data here so we could we could see how many different PIDs it has but I just want to go down to uh, well let's see view data and we've got complete data set we could scan through those real quick I mean uh, 
just to see what's going on. We'll see how long. Hey, that loaded up pretty fast. So, okay, so bank one fuel system, we got to open. So fault, obviously, that's the uh, P0134. Closed loop on bank two. And I'll just scroll down through this real quick. You're just, just using the arrow keys, that's all. If you push this, the entire page will turn in one shot. So let's see, short fuel, short term fuel trim on bank two, 2.3, that looks good. What was it up here? I missed it. On bank one, we're just reading zero, zero. So I guess the computer, you know, it's in default mode, whatever, whatever it's told to do. Hopefully the glare's not killing you guys. Um, skipping through here let's see okay so there's our o2 bank one sensor one is 1.27 so it's completely uh that would be rich so that was that's what its default is and then let's go down here to bank two sensor one is switching nicely so we want to see that between what like 100 millivolts up to you know some of them go up to 900 millivolts usually it's it's switching pretty fast. This one's going up to I just saw it go to 690. Maybe it's getting weak too. This car has 115,000 miles on it, so uh, I believe these are original O2 sensors. Anyway, here's something we can do. Let's just get out of here. Let's go to custom data set. So okay, let's scroll to the. Oops, hit the wrong one. I want to scroll down. We we just want the two. I want the two front oxygen sensors, so that would be O2 B1 Bank 1 Sensor 1. Right, I'm hitting the right arrow to put a little check mark there. Then let's scroll down to oxygen sensor. We don't want bank. We don't want number two. We want bank two. So O2 B2 Sensor 1. The fan just kicked on. So that's got. So it's telling us we have two PIDs. So that's number two PID. Then I'm going to press OK, and now we're getting live data. So as you see in blue highlighted, that's bank one. We're stuck at 1.27, which would be rich, right? It's not moving at all. And if we go down to bank two sensor one, we, we've got normal switching. So, you know, 100 millivolts up to, I don't know, eight, 900 millivolts is probably normal. This one's jumping up to eight, seven, 900. You just saw there. Okay, so it's doing its thing. Now, if we wanted to graph it, let's, Let's just hit the OK button, and we can actually see it switching. Let's see how fast it takes. So, it, you know, it gives you an idea. It looks like it's moving along pretty good. So we want to see that up and down, up and down on the sensor, the front sensor, not the rear sensor, not the cat sensor, the, the, uh, the number two sensors in the back. We don't want those switching. We want them nice and steady. So anyhow, this one's switching nice. Let's go. I'll hit Escape. And let's go up here. And of course, when we go to graph this, it's just going to be a flat line, right? We're at 1.27. Okay, I don't know if I caught that on screen, but I wanted to show you guys real quick that the um, sensor just dropped out to zero volts right there. It had a dropout on its own. I didn't touch anything. I was just talking to the camera, and then, of course, I looked up here at the screen and realized there's so much glare, I doubt you guys saw anything. So it definitely dropped out to zero all on its own. There it goes. It just did it again. So I don't know if that's some kind of default code or what's going on or it's just bad, but we got to check the wiring and we need to check the connector. Here we go. Wait a minute. Are we switching now? Okay, let's see what's going on here. It's doing a little switchy switch, but it's going, what we don't want to see, it's going like, this isn't normal. It's going to zero volts, which is not good, and it's going to, you know, full beans there 1.27 to quote mr erico they're full beans um let's get under the hood let's check the connector and check the wiring that's where i want to go i want to make sure there's no cuts or burns it's not sitting on the exhaust pipe and that there aren't any green crusties in the connector that are going to cause you know an issue like this well that's kind of cool we caught it acting up so this is your uh back bank here which is bank one bank two's up here if you need the uh, front bank two sensor, that's going to be this connector right here. So basically it's the exact same oxygen sensor as you have on the bank one as you do on two. Same connector, same wiring. And while I'm speaking of that, let me pop this off here. 
and show you guys what's what. So it's a three wire coming in. This is coming, you know, in here, and this is your, um, you got three wire oxygen sensor, two whites and a black, you know, for your heater. Anyhow, um, power and ground. Anyway, red is your power in. The center pin is white. That's the signal. That's what the computer is, uh, you know, seeing. And blue is your ground. So now you know, you know, when I'm talking about when I'm going from hot to ground to signal. Let me unhook this here. There's just a little one of these. These are easy to take apart. Just push this little pin down, separate them. And then we'll look in there for, you know, any crusties. And it looks nice and clean. That side looks good. You know, the back here, I don't see. That green is just a rubber gasket. That's not corrosion. And this one has, the red is actually black gasket which looks good and then on the o2 sensor side we've got the three pins <clears throat> and what i'll do is check pin one and three which are these outsides and we'll do an ohm test now you know we all know about the ohms i don't know how you know it, it can help you sometimes you you can uh, you can do an ohm test i think these things when they're hot is around five ohms normally cold i think it's like three to four ohms don't hold me to it but uh, we'll just do the ohm test on this because everything in there looks clean just to see what it's got. And then why don't we compare the ohms to the, uh, I'm pretty sure this one's bad. It's, it's getting a new O2 sensor. i got to order that. Um, compare it to a known good. We saw that one switching bank one, so let's, or bank two, I'm sorry. So let's do that. Let's do an ohm test next. Got the ohm meter set up, so it has an audible signal. I believe you can turn that off if you don't want to hear this. So when we have full continuity, we get that audio. And I'm going to uh, touch pin one and three. Oops, a little rubber gasket in my way. Hold on a second. Just give me a bear with me here. Jeez, off camera shenanigans. Okay, so here's one and here's three. And we got 5.8. So can you see that? Oh boy, is that annoying, that beat. So we got 5.8 on that one. Let me put the, uh, there's a little weather pack gasket thing here. That's, that's what popped out. Let me push that back into the connector here. Goes on the connector side. And then what we're going to do, that's in. What we'll do now is we're going to go back to our uh, suspect back there and see what he's got. So we're back here at bank one. We're good with continuity. Here's our connector right here. So this time you guys can see them. I'm not playing magic tricks here. So we'll go to pin one. I'm just gently putting pressure on the sides and here's two. 5.5 ohms. So I believe the other one was 5.8. So technically I would say they're both pretty much in spec for being hot. And uh, that proves a point right there. So I'm fairly certain with the voltage readings we're getting that we have a bad O2 sensor, the connector, you know, the wiring's good. We've checked all that. Um, actually, what I could do here is go from pin one to two, make sure there shouldn't be any continuity. Let's check, okay? So we don't have a, um, a short to ground. That's what we're checking for there. So I'm touching those and they're open, which is good. That, you know, if you had a, uh, a hot wire could be touching the ground, blah, blah, blah. You know how it goes. We could, uh, we could have an issue there. So I just want to triple check everything here so it's like 45 bucks for a new NTK is what I'm gonna put in here flat rate master confirmed with me that uh, I need an NTK that's I like to use the OEM type oxygen sensors when I'm replacing them so I want to show you guys how I do the circuit integrity here real quick so right now the ignition is on you have to do this test with the ignition on I've got the uh, leads are on the pop on the battery terminals they're positive and negative so the battery's 12.08 it's a little low uh, ground is over there I'm gonna go over here to our connector I'm not sure if you guys hopefully you can see what I'm doing here um, carefully I'm going to back probe you've got the three wires the red white and blue red is our power so we should have a 12 volt source here is what we should get let me back probe that and then I'm just going to touch this wire to here and let's see what we got Good, so 11.99, so we're right around 12. 
Now I'm going to go over to ground, and it's okay to do this. You're not going to hurt anything. Um, this would basically be like a voltage drop test. We're 11.97. So let me switch my lead from battery negative over to battery positive, and you can see it's 0 0.09. So that's a good ground. So we have good power, good ground. Now what we'll do is we'll check the signal wire. Um, I can do it with the car off. It's not a big deal. I'm going to have to get a helper because i got to set the camera up. I won't be able to see the numbers are too small. So maybe we can uh, coax Mrs. Osdor out here to give us a hand real quick. And uh, that's pretty much it. Now another thing you can do is let's say you had zeros here, uh, whether it was power or ground check the connector this one you know i did take it apart already i looked at the pins they're fine you could disconnect this uh connector and just do the test let me uh unplug this here you could just do the test this way also disconnect the connector and you could go directly without spreading the terminals uh what we say red is hot so touch that you know that would be our power and our ground right there there's our ground. So power, let's go. Power to power, we don't want that. We want ground over here. There we go, all right. So 11.97, the battery is dropping. And then if we go over to the ground side, you know, it's, it's nothing there. We shouldn't see any, we shouldn't see any voltage. That way we know we don't have a power to, sh to ground short there going on. Anyway, if you do hit the signal wire, we got a 0.17. So 0.17 is basically, uh, what, 170 millivolts going on. And uh, I don't know if that's a normal rest state or not, but we do know there's a signal from the computer, so that's good. Anyway, let's get to the next step. All right, so what I want to do now is explain or demonstrate the computer integrity, that everything's working, the circuitry's working good. I've got my helper, Mrs. Ostar, here. She's behind the camera. She can see what you guys are seeing on the screen which is the, uh, you know, the data we're getting, the live data. So we've got bank one is in blue, and which is about how many millivolts right now? 280. 280. And then we have uh, the one below it is bank two is what right now? 320. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, I, or what I've already done is I back probe the center wire, which is the white wire, the signal wire, and I have a small lead coming out of it. I'm not sure if you guys probably can't see what I'm doing here. But I'm just going to hold the end of the lead with my fingertips and um, touch. Right now I'm going to touch battery negative directly. And this is for bank one. And it's 280. It should drop right now. What is it? It's around 200 now. 200? Mm -hmm. Okay. So 200 millivolts there. Now we're going to do the same test for bank two. I'm holding the lead back back plugged or back pinned into the uh, white wire, the signal wire. I'm going to touch negative now. 190. Okay, so that one dropped a little more. 180 than the now. Yeah. It dropped more than the other one mm -hmm. then, right? Okay. Right. Yeah. But it, what are they both now? I just let go. They're back at 280 and 320. Okay, so bank two has a little bit more, what is about 50 millivolts more. So now what I'll do is same test. I'm going back to bank one. I'm grabbing onto the to the wire here that I have back probed, and I'm going to touch battery positive. Wow, 1270. What's that? 1270, 1.270. Yeah, it's a big difference. <laughs> yeah. It's a big mm -hmm. difference between 12 volts yeah. and 1.27. So we're at 1.27, so that would be pegged out full rich, basically. So it is reacting, so that's good. The computer is definitely responding to that. I'm going to let go now. She went back to two, whatever it was. 80. Yeah, 280. Okay, now we're going to do the same test with bank two. I'm holding on to the uh, wire I have back probed and touching positive now. The same, 1.27. Okay, so they both went up. That's good. Mm -hmm. All right, so you, thank you for your eyes and sight and all that good stuff. We appreciate You're it. You're welcome. So anyhow, that's, that's a test that we do for circuit integrity. I know that's good, so we'll get to the next step now. So before I put the uh, meter away, I wanted to show you guys something that's pretty cool with this scan tool here, this multimeter combo. You can also graph it. So I was up there at the voltage earlier, which you saw, but uh, now I'm touching this on and off. So it also gives you um, min max here, and you can check frequency and duty cycle. So it has you know many features, but the graph 
sometimes can come in very handy. So I hope you're following along so far. I'm gonna you know wait on the part here. Once that comes in, I'll pop it in. I got to get the oxygen sensor socket and go under there and you know pray, wish, hope, curse. Uh, there's a whole combination of things, uh, including you know like liquid wrench on there, PB blaster, whatever your favorite flavor is, and uh, soak it and hope it comes out okay and hope it comes out in one piece and the threads don't get all bungled up, but we'll see what happens. Uh, maybe I'll show you where it's at down there. Like I say, I, phys I visually inspected the uh, wiring harness from the O2 sensor up to the connector there. Everything looks good. There's nothing burnt. That's you know something you definitely want to check out. But the way we can force it, rich and lean and all that good stuff, you know, high voltage, low, that was kind of neat with that scan tool we saw to drop out. So by graphing it, we saw it go from 1.27 to zero, and then at one point it like fluctuated a lot, but it wasn't really switching, it was just kind of dropping out. So anyway, I'll get the uh, O2 sensor, maybe I'll give you a shot of that, you know, coming out or going in, hopefully I'll see how time goes here. I don't want to keep rambling on, make the video too long. Uh, we'll hook the scan tool back up inside the car. Hopefully we see the proper switching of the new O2 sensor, and we'll consider it a fix. All right, we're rolling now since we got so much time till the O2 shows up. Why don't we uh, do the starter test? So I clicked on starter test and it's telling me, give me two things here. One is uh, turn off all vehicle loads and the other is make sure the ignition is on. So I do have the ignition on and I'm hooking up the clamps right now. So I highlight with the cursor to start test. It says turn off all vehicle loads, make sure the ignition is on. The ignition is on. We're at 12.49, oops, we're at 12.49 volts, press OK. I have the clamps hooked to, to um, negative and positive. It's saying start engine. So let me go start that. I'll wedge this in here for you and uh, give her a start. Let me, cause this thing's cool. It's got this little uh, kickstand on the back, which is very handy. So let me kickstand this for you guys. There you go. I'll start it and see what it says. Cranking normal. Cranking bolts. It's giving cranking bolts at 8.53. Uh, volt percent was 78%. And it says cranking time 78 milliseconds. So I guess it's all good in the hood. Here, let's do the battery test because I told you guys earlier in the video this one was made in uh, October 2011 and here we are in June of 18. So I'll go to battery test. Now the car appears to start fine. It, it cranks fine. It doesn't sound weak at all but we'll do a battery test here. I've got the clamps hooked up to the you know negative and positive. Battery voltage it's saying right now is 12.8 which is pretty strong. Uh, regular battery you got different types gel, AGM we don't have that just regular. Cold cranking amps, this one has 700, so we press OK. Right here it's at 700, you could change it if you had to. So 700, press OK to continue. And it's analyzing, and let's see what it tells us here. OK, test results, replace battery. So it's saying voltage is 12.8, measured uh, 536 cold cranking amps, so it's, it's on the weaker side and it's rated at 700. So basically, that's like a quick and dirty way to just say, you know, the battery's weak. Does it still work? Yeah, it works fine, actually. Uh, when I started the car this morning, you know, it was 59 degrees or whatever, fired right up. There's, there was no long crank or anything, but I guess, you know, the battery's probably on its way out. So take it for what it's worth. All right, so you can see the O2 sensor right in here. I'm going to sneak my tool up in here on a 3 8 uh, ratchet and uh, get it over the wire and put some pressure here there we go okay that's cool that broke loose easily very easily great so now all I gotta do is uh, reach in here grab this take it off by hand I can unscrew it now it should be loose enough it's pretty tight so hopefully I can grab it. It's a little bit stiff. I may have to put my socket back on there. 
Oh boy, everything's a struggle. All right, reach in here and unscrew this sucker by hand now. There it comes. All right, finally it's out. There we go. So I'll pull it up through the top. All right, so I just fired up the engine and I pulled up the data stream again. And as we see, it looks like bank one switching like a champ right now. So down to 60 millivolts up to just saw like 740. Let me graph it. Let's see what it looks like on the graph. As we remember before, it was pretty steady at 1.25, then it dropped out to zero. So looks like we're getting some good switch action. I'm going to uh, reset the codes now, so that should go away and hopefully stay away. So that's that. All right, well that one's all done and I'm glad it's over with. It's kind of tight up in there to get that, uh, get this old one out and the new one in, but it's definitely doable. As you saw the ohm test, that wouldn't have worked too well in this case. So the ohm test is not always the best. Uh, let me know what you would have done to do your diagnostics or your testing without guessing and uh, leave it in the comment down below. I appreciate it. That scan tool worked fantastic. It was really convenient just having a multimeter and a scanner and everything right there. Boom, boom, bang. Uh, all done, right? But uh, I'll leave a link to the description down below for that Autel. If you uh, want more information on it, I'll leave a link to this O2 sensor. They work for both the uh, Bank 1 and Bank 2. It's the same part number. This is the NTK. It's for the 95 to 99. But uh, the testing, as far as that goes, that's pretty much across the board. You always want to test and not guess. That's what these guys on YouTube here are all preaching about. So here I am. Anyway, thanks for stopping in. Check me out on Instagram if you get a chance. I'd appreciate it. It's OzStar with the number one at the end. Uh, Facebook's just OzStar. Of course, subscribe here on YouTube if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Take it easy.